Hello guys and welcome to the channel Beverol here in today's video I'm going to talk to you about a really really great build strong that can do pretty much anything it is insanely high damage it is higher than my main build uh, condition soul beast it have really good survivability it's tanky with insane amount of healing and the ability to reset and it depends a lot on how you play it there is few things that kind of sit on stone and other things that in a way are optional uh, as always there are gonna be timestamps so feel free to skip ahead if you wanna see them and I'm gonna talk a little about um, how this build was made or the process for a start I wanted to be thorough and uh, not to make mistakes like to be really understanding what I'm doing and being sure with what I'm giving you this time guys so I looked even to your suggestions um, a lot of ideas I spend a lot of money on different gear sets uh, different runes um, I used rune of torment like you suggested I like tried everything and what came out at the end was a little bit surprising on what I expected would be so uh, without further ado let's get right into the build first it's full trailblazer i couldn't have some trailblazer i lost most of the money so uh, and i can't have weapons unless i really buy uh, from like from world versus world and it costs a lot so i went with dire if you can't have trailblazer it's okay to go full dire but if you can go full trailblazer you will have like 80 83 or something like this condition duration from full trailblazer uh, so you're still not even close to 100 but it will push you close enough uh, there is traits that give us 15 percent condition duration but it doesn't show so i'm actually close to 75 on all uh, condition damage uh, con damaging condition or every condition honestly. so uh, my rune actually i went with traveler rune. Uh, it's because a lot of problem happen with this build in movement speed i know travel rune look like it's a hit to the damage in a way uh, and it maybe is it if you're using tormenting rune since i tested it you can go higher than 12k uh, dbs but this build lose about 1k at maximum or something comparing to torment rune because it has other problems it will cap your torment so you can go higher than 100 percent so you end up going with dire other conditions go a little bit less so and in your um, range weapon short bow you only have this skill to do torment um, unless you're uh, in the demon stance which i don't use here but even with the demon stance the high dbs possible was um, on the exotic armor like barely uh, in a 12k uh, margin or higher and this one can go close to it if still with a demon stance but lower than demon stance we go between 10 and close to 11k probably that's as most as possible but it's about 10k dbs stable i'm talking about dbs of course without any help without anything just like you see me now okay so why did i go travel room without movement speed and no way to have swiftness on this build if you have cripple or chill or even without them it's annoying to play it's slow to move and if you get even cripple or chilled it become really hard to move you'll be caught in a red circle uh, like this and you can't simply walk out from it so you would have to waste a dodge just not to take a chill cc or get even a cc since you have only one stun break uh, like in every stance it it become really annoying and hard to to damage and whatever so uh, I even considered other solution like food but single piece of food that give you 25% is about 9 gold so it is insane of course unusable uh, I considered the sigil uh, for weapons I can't remember its name now but give you only 5 seconds on a 10 second cooldown so I will have to even switch my weapon just to be able to move fast and uh, not in a rotational way and even that is not enough so that's why I completely let go of the idea of uh, tormenting room it is usable in a condition herald or those builds but we're using a range style since we're using renegade 
because melee styles are not suitable for everything it's only for solo it is not good for meta events for uh, roaming around with a commander or whatever other um, it just you need range if the build doesn't have range it's already have a huge problem so uh, and my sigil i go with Siege of malice who is simply because we can push our condition duration more uh, and the other one is extremely mandatory of course with sigil of generosity you can change malice for something like cleansing you would lose some damage obviously but because if you will use the build like me you don't have on demand condition cleanse and that can be a little bit of a problem so you can actually go something like um, cleansing schedule but i use different options so see what fits you before you decide now for the traits condition renegade is kind of set on a stone or most condition builds for revenant because you have to go corruption devastation Devastation is mandatory in BVE for the survivability that Battle Scar offer. Battle Scar on healing skill, Battle Scar as long as you're in combat every second, five stacks on healing skills we have two, and one second uh, interval uh, give us a Battle Scar stack, and also Dance of this, which vulnerability give us Battle Scar, and if our health is lower than 50%, the healing is doubled. It is really great for damage since either you use power or conditions the damage is barely scale up and it is really good okay and also um, the corruption trait actually offers about 30 per 30 or 40 percent of what your dbs if your condition yeah it mean a lot of your damage so uh, we have invoke torment uh, extra condition damage and extra condition duration to our damaging condition invoke torment happen when we change the legend from a legend to another we trigger this in an area around us i go with a trait uh, that increases torment damage um, the other option is we get torment and then it become transfer to our enemy but this is kind of a um, thing that i didn't want to play with because we don't have that much condition cleanses we're gonna be counting on generosity all the time and we still be losing health so it is not really that great and on melee weapon set you have a lot of torment 10 percent damage to every stack of torment like four stacks here four stacks here auto attack is way way more effective than uh, the torment that will be already damaging you until it's removed and we have extra condition duration to us and to the enemy of 15% uh, to the enemy and 10 to us. Uh, it doesn't show this trait actually, like I said here, but it still count. And the last one, every time we change legend, we trigger invoke torment and we end up triggering uh, poison and burning. So now we do torment, poison and burning to the area around us of um, damage close to like 12k or something to every mob around us which really good this skill offer more than one close to 2k dbs only this skill if you're in a situation when you need a lot of condition cleanse you can actually go for this trait you would be losing some damage so if it is okay like you're not really on a time sensitive uh, kill like a bounty or whatever you can go this skill and now you are really really good and effective in cleansing condition actually which unblockable and even ignore blind so it will always just like hit okay so it become really good but like i said you're gonna lose uh, some serious damage losing this one but the option is there you don't have to change anything in your build um, just one skill like not another line or whatever or uh, legend and devastation uh, like we explained in the power build before it is mostly bar things like vulnerability on the start of the combat which will mean uh, dance of this and higher damage per weapon for power stuff and extra damage on vulnerability too but the battle scars are triggered on our heal as long as we're in combat and on vulnerability which mean this skill do a huge a ton amount of battle scars since it dish out uh, vulnerability to everything it hits and it is one of the main sources of sustain in this build if not the most important one as you see our weapon doesn't do vulnerability not a single skill do it so this skill 
is unless we are in the first of combat this skill is the only thing that do vulnerability actually and also this one if you are on um, uh, the thief the assassin this one uh, do uh, aoe vulnerability too so it can help with your sustain a little bit the stun but it you usually not actually use it for the vulnerability of course it is just useful to already keep pushing more um, of vulnerability uh, the last one is renegade uh, which give us fury uh, if we hit a target lower than 50% and uh, a critical chance increased for 33% as long as we have uh, fall endurance and vigor every time we get fury which work really great with something like the assassin stance which is what I like the most in this build but there is going to be other options when we get to it and I will explain it when I get to it too and we also get bleed, uh, increased bleed duration by 25% and we make our short bow beers. So these two skills, every skill now hit all targets. And also increase our damage uh, by 25%, which means those two skills and this one that give us interval on every hit will trigger bleed. And the last one is resetting uh, Kala's fervor and give us 15 stacks of might. And also give us better condition damage uh, to make a color give us three uh, percent condition damage not actually two and also in this way when we, every time we use heroic command if we have five stacks of color they are resetted and we get 15 stacks of might so the next for 14 seconds so the next time after only 10 seconds it's up to 25 but it keep getting down and up down and up but it is a really great source of might now for the food i use like always better sustain to get from uh, the healing one mm, it is optional since the build have a lot of sustain just like the last one uh, power renegade but i still favor this food so i use it with every build if you've been following me for a while and the world versus world one for uh, condition damage utility uh, you get from uh, permanent portable division here but there is other trading boost options of course so now let's talk about the stats Kala is we are stuck with it it is our main source of healing uh, from this one and also tank us uh, against condition uh, AOE days better damage like all of its skill now is really effective and if we really stuck uh, like having Bing and now we couldn't use our skills stuff like this and we are almost dying if we have enough energy this skill will reset you if you have can use this with this at the same time this skill will every hit will trigger the life siphon you would be resetting 20k health in like four seconds like nothing you would be hitting with the same with like you hit and this skill hit and everything giving you health for the other stance it is optional first i do not like demon uh, let me just give it out to you in like in the beginning i will be telling you why but let's discuss our best option in my opinion for most situation which is the assassin why because first it gives us a decent damage here and healing this skill here for a lot actually um, because it is give us six hits and every hit here for close to 800 so and here is initially for 1k and a half so we're talking about like mm, more than 5k or like 6k or whatever uh, also the only skill uh, the only legend that have a stun break without a cooldown also the stun break give us fury which trigger from this trade vigor remember that this trade give us 33 percent critical chance as long as our endurance fall guess what the skill do also it give us 25 endurance so it give us half a dodge let's say we dodge like this we use it it is already a dodge and give us half a dodge so now you can be really really mobile and survivable so as you see i'm thinking about this as a um, like a core condition ranger with lightning reflexes it feels the same way it is effective and since Revenant generally are bad against CC, this skill count for a lot because it doesn't have a cooldown. So once you're building up energy, it simply can be used again and giving you even more dodges. Also, it removes Immobilized, Chill and Cribble, which means you don't have to waste co any condition cleanses or 
like it already spare uses and the condition cleanse will happen to the other damaging ones or the really problematic one but of course as you see there is not any cleanse just beside the generosity serum this uh, legend doesn't have condition cleanse and Kala doesn't have condition cleanse which is a problem in the, um, the assassin stats also we have a really great uh, defense bar breaker that help us around and put even vulnerability so it will trigger a lot of battle scars also the quality of life just moving like this uh, from a skill like this giving you quickness and stuff and sometimes if i have uh, extra energy because i was uh, stunned or whatever i use this skill as you see beside your healing or something like the stun and vulnerability this skill is the only skill that would help you do damage how it will put a hit on every hit you do it trigger an extra hit on every uh, weapon skill that you would be using which mean those hits will count for the battle scars so if you're in Kala and using this skill, you will be capped to 25 stacks of battle scars so, so fast. As you see, it, it barely did anything and I was already at 9. And for most of the time, um, like if you got CC'd or whatever, you will be capped and counting more and didn't get any use from it. So that's why when I had Kala, I would be, if I need CC, I would use this one, of course. If I don't, I would use those two skills. So I would go to three give them might and i would go to the assassin and trigger this one to start hitting um, the battle scars of course i would be um, like let's say i'm combat i'm switch i'm waiting 10 seconds so i'll be putting those two giving them might fighting normally uh, i needed healing let's say something like this uh, i trigger clarity or whatever like i'm waiting until they both come or at least this one so I will be triggering it and then go to the assassin and now getting use of every battle scar that they have. So I would be waiting for it to happen first. The other option uh, which was my first choice and really great, uh, even the DBS doesn't make much difference, is the dwarf stats. It helps just like the assassin because now we have stability. And we can even give it to others. So we don't need that much stun break. But it has a downside which is a stun break use insane amount of energy. That most of the time not always will be even available. But it is good. It helps even other people. It reduces damage insanely. It make it can save your life. And also it have great CC just like the assassin stance with this skill. And we even lower the damage more. And we have the hammer to lower the damage and heal more. And they are unblockable. And we can use them in the same method to trigger battle scars. Like the same idea. We always use Kala get out and trigger battle scars through the other stunts. And now we even have a condition cleanse on demand. So as you see, I use both uh, legends like Dwarf or um, the Assassin uh, as I want. And if you just want to tank and make mistakes easier, believe me, Dwarf would look better for most of the time. Assassin is just give you quality of life in general, but in solo you could find Dwarf more effective at some point. And also the cleanse is just amazing. So honestly you can use either this one or this one. And if you're kind of new to this whole style, I would suggest the Dwarf better and even will help you better in melee. You see, melee on the Assassin is just... The, it's not a good idea. It is... Uh, Nothing lowers the damage and it puts you in a problem. So up until this point I used to um, Like it is still strong the build can fight anything with either this or this But it's up to you what you like more uh, if you fight a more condition I would probably go with something like a dwarf if you just want to move around too fast I would go with the assassin now for the other option is the demon and Why I don't like the demon stance well, the demon stance took the bad side of both stances and combined it. Not the best, not as actually the bad one. Because it doesn't solve the idea of stun breaks, it doesn't give you stability, it has one stun break which relatively still high. Uh, and it even try or force you to not use it. 
if you want to have effective damage you use this skill and keep triggering your weapon skills so fast and they are have low cooldown this one to trigger the double torment after you use energy not one and you don't use the skills probably your healing skills only but if you're forced to use your stun break you could not have energy for it anyway and that's a problem or now this skill will be off because you used most of your energy using stun break or something like this even if you want to use a cc to collect mobs around you it use insane amount of energy on everything it does and the only real source of damage or the only source of damage at all is this skill so it gives you the idea of it do a lot of damage but it do a lot of damage as you can use this effectively which embrace the darkness and that's another problem which also unlike the dwarf so it doesn't do any damage reduction so now you're in melee you don't heal because you don't have battle scar you don't even reduce damage like you don't heal with the hammers with battle scar uh, you're in melee and you don't even reduce damage which makes this stance in my opinion is not the best option when to use it it's probably like doing hearts in like doric stuff like this when you already really tanky and whatever health loss you will just heal through it with a heal skill change to kala and immediately start healing with another skill like when the challenge is already on the easier side it's not like you're gonna be dying easily on this build anyway so it is still usable and if you use it in this method when you go to it trigger embrace the darkness and start just hitting your skills then it is great it will push your dbs even farther so it has its uses but for solo and stuff i would rather go with dwarf as most effectively or the assassin dwarf against a lot of condition um, can be a little bit more effective but you can go with the assassin um, the survivability on it is is really higher it you can make mistakes and recover which make me like it but in a combat that you really want to survive you can even go with this trait uh, against condition or you can completely remove malice especially if you have ascended gear uh, and use something like cleanse incision so that's it for the build um, and you already took a glimpse about on rotation how i go but let me explain a little bit faster so for solo stuff usually i would be on range sometime i would move on melee because i would have chills and slow i would have ball so i have a lot of cc and also um, a lot of damage so let's see how i uh, i do this usually i would start i'll start on the other stance uh, not on kala i'll start on melee and on the other stance whatever it was any one it was so uh, let's say I would use this skill first uh, to help boost break in defense bar and get me closer, convenient. And uh, I would probably trigger this one and go uh, leap in it for the might. I would trigger the stun. I would change. I would go with those two skills, given the might, trigger another one, hit, and then ball. And now trigger the weapon set. Change it to the other weapon set. And trigger another CC if needed. If not, uh, and even this one if needed. Um, but if not needed, I will trigger this one. You see this if you want damage, this if you want CC. All those things like that. You don't have enough energy for both. And for our F skills, I don't ever use Citadel Bombardment. It doesn't have this much damage. It will cost a lot of energy. It is, it is incredibly ineffective as skill. It just... Um, if you're convenient, if you have a lot of energy and you're gathering wood or something, you can go with it. But I don't. It is better even to get the alacrity to get your skills faster than using this one. It even costs less. So, uh, most of the time I don't use those two skills unless I have extra energy, then I would use this one. But the bombardment is off for me. It is unusable. So in Kala, you use skills depending on the situation. Those two or those two. This one is always used off cooldown technically. And you would heal uh, if you want to and trigger also five stacks of um, battle scars using it. If you got locked down uh, in a CC or something or uh, in a bang or whatever and your health dropped drastically, you can trigger this skill with this. And the damage of it will trigger the life siphon and also with your skills you will be having insane healing immediately. 
you change to the uh, assassin stance and most of the time you would only want to heal uh, kite with it if you have to and use this skill for extra damage for battle scar use if you don't have battle scar use you're just waiting for kala just go into it use this skill of cooldown if you're using something like the dwarf you would use the cc from this skill stability if needed and on hammer to trigger um, the battle scar as we explained and heal once you need to or if you have condition enough to cleanse while kiting and then go to Kala and reset the whole process again short bow would give you enough damage so for most of the time you wouldn't even have to switch but for the highest effectiveness you would be switching between weapon sets so that's it for the video guys and i hope you like it there's gonna be some footage of fighting uh, to elaborate more and give you some details into it um, i hope you put this build to a test and don't forget to sub like and share it and i'll be seeing you next time